you know, in the hood, everybody got gear. You could either get a job or you go into the street to get money, to get your Jordans or do whatever you got to do. I went to go get a job, like, I, because I wanted to go get a job. I wanted some some nice clothes and shit. And I came home with a uh, with a job application. I was sitting down at the table, and my grandmother grabbed it from me and threw it in the garbage. She was like, you play baseball. Whoa. I don't want you working. Like, if you need something to do in the summertime, go ahead, go throw. It's the R-O-X-A-N-N-E, got C.C. Sabathia with me. Of course, you know I got Cool V. Hey. That's the way it is, and that's the way it'll be. Please believe it, baby. How are you, brother dear? Good. Thanks for having me, you guys. Uh, thanks the for honor. being here. The pleasure is ours. The honor is ours, you know? Yes. In so many years of doing what you love to do is a blessing, and not everybody is able to say that. Not everybody is able to sit back and say, you know what? Through the most of my life, what I wanted to do is what the fuck I did. Do you feel that way? Yeah, I mean, my whole life, really. I mean, I, I, I've never had a job. <laughs> I've been playing baseball my whole life. And I think that, you know, to be honest, that's why I wanted to put out this documentary because that's always been my plan. It's always been my path. Like, my, my dad, my grandmother, my mom, they literally put me on this singularly, like there was no other, there was no backup plan. Like, he's gonna play baseball, this shit is gonna work, like this is how it's gonna be. And like for, for my father, it was you gonna play for the Yankees, you're gonna play in Yankee Stadium. Wow. Like, so for it to all really come true, I'm just sitting here, I got goosebumps now, for it to all come true is a blessing for sure. Absolutely, you know, and I, I'm a firm believer of that. I believe that the path that you put your children on, if you stay consistent with that path, so will they. You know, I've heard people say like, I didn't want to be a lawyer, but I'm a lawyer because my parents wanted me to be. Well, motherfucker, you a lawyer. You a lawyer. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> shit, you know what I'm saying? You, you, shit, you could have been, you could have been a liar, and instead you a motherfucking lawyer. <laughs> you know? yeah, I mean, I remember, I remember the summer, my summer of my ninth grade year, like. Everybody was, you know, in the hood, everybody got gear. You could either get a job or you go into the street to get money, to get your Jordans or do whatever you got to do. And I remember that summer, I went to go get a job. Like, I, cause I wanted to go get a job, I wanted some some nice clothes and shit. And I came home with a uh, with a job application. I was sitting down at the table and my grandmother grabbed it from me and threw it in the garbage. She was like, you play baseball. Whoa. I don't want you working. Like, if you need something to do in the summertime, go ahead, go throw, go do something, go practice on your craft. I don't want you working. Like it was, she was that serious about me never having a job and, and only staying focused on baseball. Wow. I love it. I love it. It's because, you know, parents, our parents actually see things in us that we don't. And sometimes, you know, and that's not always the case, but when we're blessed like we are, then, you know, that's always the case. Cause I can remember when I was younger, you know, my mom knew I was going to use profanity. Like we knew I was going to be a professional, a professional cusser. Like we knew that. Yeah. Like when I was 10, I asked her, could I curse? And she was like, yeah, go ahead. You know, cause she knew <laughs> like, I'm, I'm going to help her perfect this shit. Like you're going to be the best cusser there is, you All know? Right. <laughs> and so for your family to put that push behind you, you know, it, it does, it does something for your soul because it already has it embedded in there. First of all, I was trying to get HBO and HBO Max and everybody else to give me a copy of it. And I was like, look, I want to see it. I want to see it. And then I was like, well, look, I already know everything I need to know. But are there some surprises in here that we don't know in yeah, your documentary? They, they are, there are. I mean, just my family dynamic, you know, um, like I said, growing up, um, you know, I think everybody likes to paint the, the, the picture of, of my story, you know, me being raised by a single black mom, which my mom is incredibly strong and, and I wouldn't be sitting here if it wasn't for her. She's an incredible woman, she's upstairs right now, but my dad had played a huge role in my life. and. And, and is, is the reason why I'm, I'm so good at baseball. And, and, and like the skill and all that stuff came from him. You know, they split up when I was 12. And that's where everybody likes to pick up my story is like, you know, cause when, when everybody got caught wind of, of me as a baseball player, it was just me and my mom. But nobody really saw like all that work my dad put in uh, before when I was a kid. And, you'll, and that'll come through in this documentary. And when he passes away at such a young age in my life, I think that's what leads me on the path of, a, of more drinking and, and on the road down to, uh, to rehab. I think what it is too is that what you want people to understand is that 
with your dad, you know, fathers play a very important role in our children's lives. And they don't always get the credit. Now, mind you, I grew up without a dad. You know, that's no secret. I made a movie about it. You know what I'm saying? Kind of thankful that he did walk away because I probably wouldn't have had so much to motherfucking talk about had he been around. But the fact is, you know, um, I've learned to look at the, that silver lining. And when it came to you being able to say, listen, I don't want you to forget my father. I don't want you to forget the times that he was out there throwing the ball harder, you know, picking up the bat, you know, making me run faster and doing those things. So I commend you on that because a lot of times everybody wants to hear the story of the single mom, which, which let me just tell you, we are fucking superheroes. Like a single mom is a superhero, you know, but a single black mom of a son is a super superhero because she has to do more than you know. You know what I'm saying? We have the police are kryptonite, the streets are kryptonite, the first girl that he fucked with is kryptonite, because you know we gotta get all in between that shit to me. You know, we gotta, man, we, you know, we gotta be everything and everything, and we still gotta work and we still gotta feed you and we gotta love you. So, you know, I, I commend you on doing this and I really look forward to the documentary. Now, just tell me, if you had to sum up one of your years, and I know when you've had so many great years and so many any great things happen in these years outside of family but I want to just go to your career what is your favorite year like what is the CC motherfucking year like like the one you're gonna tell your grand grand grands about so it, it, it would be it would be like two to be honest it would be it was almost like a year and a half so the second half of 2008 when I get traded from Cleveland to Milwaukee and then mm-hmm. all of 2009 my first year here first year in Yankee Stadium you know what I mean? We got the brand new stadium. We won the championship that whole year. That was the year Jay-Z came out, Empire State of Mind. Like, it was just crazy. So so uh, the second half, from like July 2008 until until two, uh, all the way to 2009 are probably, probably the best I pitch in my career. And, you know, going out there to the mound, I felt like I was going to win every game. We thought so, oh, too. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> CC, CC get on the mound, you you feel a calm come over you. You know what I'm saying? Like you know, sometimes you got pitchers where they're good, but it's hitters that are just as good as the pitcher. When you was pitching for the Yankees, it was like, yo, we don't care who come up, we think CC could win the battle. <laughs> <laughs> that's what and I'm that's talking how I about. Too, walking to go into the park every day for sure. Yeah, yeah. So now with the with the with the pandemic and everybody staying home. How have you adjusted? Like, like, how is it? You know what? It's it's actually uh, it's it was actually good for me. So being on the road for basically my whole life, my whole career, having a chance. You know, I got four kids. I got a seventeen year old, fifteen, uh, twelve, and ten. So to be able to like actually just lock lock them in and and be here and kind of reintegrate into the family has been a lot of fun. Um, you know, no baseball after school, no dance for the girls, no basketball, no none of that stuff. It was just us six in here, um, you know, kind of just getting reconnected. So, you know, the pandemic has been tough on a lot of people and, and obviously I'm praying for everybody's family, but for us personally, it, it was it was a, a way for us to reset and kind of reconnect, um, you know, being a baseball family for so long and, and now we're actually a regular family. Um, you know, yeah. uh, it was a blessing to be able to get that time with us. I need to take you back into time. I need to take you back to before the money started coming in, before you started getting checks, you know, when you was just like little CC. Mm-hmm. The ice cream truck is coming. You didn't have an ice cream truck. You had an ice cream lady who sold ice cream out of her motherfucking the candy refrigerator. Lady at the house. Yeah, yeah sure. exactly. Remember that? You had to go there. She used to have to open up her freezer and she had meat on one side and ice cream on the other. Yeah. And all you're doing is looking at the meat like, ew, this is about ice cream. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but yet and still, she started her own little business. So I need you to tell me, on a hot day, what is little Cece getting from the ice cream truck? Four Chaco Tacos. My, my mom used to give me $5 to go to the, uh, to wow. the, to the truck, to the ice cream truck. So I would run down there and I would probably get Chaco Tacos was was a dollar back then. So I'd probably get three mm-hmm. and then I'd give my give my boys two dollars to get whatever else they was gonna get. Wow. I like that. Chaco Tacos was my was my thing in the in, in uh in the hood. And even to the point where my wife had an ice cream truck pull up here for my 40th birthday the other day and it was nothing but Chaco Tacos in there. Wow. Oh, that's so <laughs> sweet. I was getting ready to ask you about that too. Oh, that is so sweet. You see? See, when you have, listen, when you have a great wife, she knows what you want. Yeah. Ain't nobody buying no motherfucking Lamborghinis. Get this motherfucker a Choco Taco. Taco, taco. You know, help me. <laughs> I don't need no truck. I don't need no special yeah. yeah. that shit. Yeah. Bring an ice cream truck. 
and some Fritos, <laughs> and I'm good. <laughs> Hell yeah, that's what we gonna get him. Look at his smile on his face. Don't he look happier than yeah. when we got a Lamborghini? <laughs> <laughs> okay, did you ever have an MC name? Nah, I never, I never really tried to rap. You know, I grew up in Vallejo, though, where everybody raps. So, like, mm -hmm. you know, we grew up in the land of Mac Dre E-40, so... I mean, you either had to, you had to really be able to rap, so you can't, you can't just dabble in that. So no, nah, I didn't, I didn't have a, I didn't have a MC name for sure. Okay, well, give me one of your favorites. Give me one of your favorite hip hop songs from back in the day. Uh, it would have to be a Mac Dre song, probably just California Living, um, or Too okay. Hard for the Radio. Too Hard for the Radio, probably because that was like his first hit, and him, you know, being from my neighborhood, like us hearing that on the radio was a huge deal back then. Wow. Favorite dance? Favorite dance would have to be the Cabbage Patch, probably from back in the day. <laughs> yeah. I, never, I never could do that. I never could do that. <laughs> I'm not about to try to do it either. Not no more. <laughs> but yeah, nah, that was back in the day. I know that there's times where people have one thing that they keep as like a sign of luck. You know, there's like one thing that, that people keep that they say that, you know, this is a sign of luck. Like for me, I keep, um, I think it's me and Oscar De La Hoya and Biz Marquis are the only three that I know of that still keep a folded up food stamp in their wallet, mm -hmm. like right next to a black card. You keep that so that you can understand once we were here, now we are here, but they still so fucking close together. Yeah. You know, so tell me, do you have any one thing that you have like that? Like yeah, uh, something that's lucky? My grandmother was, uh, she was huge on like $2 bills. She would always give me a $2 bill either for my birthday or for Christmas. Um, as like a good luck thing to keep in my wallet. And it, and I and I always felt like I was lucky, you know, like lucky shit used to always happen to me. So I really believed in it. So I always keep a $2 bill in my wallet, just wow. folded up, um, like at the end of at the end of my wallet next to, to all my money. I don't, I want to say it's the same one she gave me. I know I've lost it, you know, from, you know, 20 years ago now. But, but you got it. I always have a $2 bill in my wallet for sure. Absolutely, because that's one thing that we do like, not that we're like these big superstitious people, but one thing we can say, CC, between me, you, and Cool V, we some lucky motherfuckers. Like we, we got a chance to do what we love. Like really lucky. Yeah. Like you know, no, like, I, we I can, know, I know how blessed and lucky I am for sure. I mean, yes, especially coming from where I came from. Yeah, for sure. I know, I know it. So, I mean, I'm, I'm, I live it every day. I, I mean, I don't, I don't take that for granted at all. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. So when you look at those items, they can kind of just make you smile. So what I did is I told my kids, like, I wanted them to have a lucky item. But the catch is, they ain't never really been through no shit. Yeah. So they don't really, they, you know, to them, everything they get is like a lucky, like, yeah, nah, this is gonna be my lucky chain. Now these are my lucky earrings. Now this is my lucky jacket. You know, they, they, they just get too much luck spread around. <laughs> you know, that type of shit. You just like, that's just too much luck spread around. I need you to get one thing specifically. So that's the reason why I asked you about that. So I know that V is more so into sports. Yeah. And, 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 and things like that. I'm looking, wait, okay, one more thing. Under the grapefruit tree. Mm -hmm. Why under the grapefruit tree? Oh, I mean, the, the 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 name of the title of the of the doc is super authentic, just because when I grew up, my grandmother's house, we had this huge grapefruit tree in our backyard, and um, I used to she wouldn't let me grab the ones off the tree. I used to have to get the dead ones off the ground, and I would get this folding chair and set it up next to the house, and it was my strike zone. So I would use the grapefruits as a baseball, and like the the inside back of the folding chair would be like the catcher. So if I threw it in there, it would be strike, and that's how I would play games. So. Um, under the grapefruit tray is literally like how I learned how to throw a baseball. I get it, because that baseball, you throwing them heavy grapefruits, yeah. baseball ain't nothing. That's yeah. that power coming off that mound. See, CC come off the mound, that ball is going like, zoosh. <laughs> <laughs> and that's, that's where it came from. It started with those grapefruits um, that I used to pick up off the ground. So that's why, I mean, even just the name, the, everything about the dock is super authentic, even down to the name. Wow, that's I, dope. I love it, I love it. Listen, I can't thank you enough for stopping by. You know, we're going to make sure that everybody tunes in. It actually comes out December 22nd, 9 p.m. I'm going to be in front of motherfucking TV. Yes. Since HBO didn't want to send me one, you know I'm going to be in front of motherfucking TV. <laughs> Shit. You know what I'm saying? But big shout out to HBO, HBO Max. So make sure that everybody get in front of that TV, get it on your telephones. We got to watch this. You know we love you. You are one of our favorite all-time 
the players. You have done some great things. You have inspired so many. And because of that, you know, we can do nothing but support you and then some. We continue to love you. Now I know that you like Choco Tacos. I'm going to make sure that if I ever bump it to you, I got you some. Please <laughs> believe the baby. And all we want is for him to have a what? A nice day! <laughs> Please, baby, baby. Thank you so much, brother dear. Thank you guys for having me.